honor to be invited to speak today, and um, we have such a distinguished uh, crowd of all backgrounds. Uh, it was fascinating to listen to all of your uh, little remarks and all your backgrounds. Um, today's remarks, uh, my speech today, will not be about the past. Uh, I'm not going to give you a lecture about history. Uh, I'm going to talk more about where we are today. I'm more of an activist for the Armenian cause, but where are we politically and how we see the issue today, rather than rehash what happened 100 years ago. You can look that up. Uh, many of you are familiar with what happened. Basically, if I were to summarize it in a sentence or two, Armenians living in their historic homeland for thousands of years, about 600 years ago, the Turkish uh, group, uh, nation, uh, came, the Turkish armies came and occupied that part of the world, and they took over Constantinople, which is now today Istanbul, and they ruled for, uh, you know, ever since then. And uh, in 19, there was many series of massacres, I'll refer to some of them very briefly, and then the, the largest massacre was the genocide in 1915, where one and a half million Armenians were eliminated from the boundaries of uh, what was then the Ottoman Empire, since then it's the Republic of Turkey. And <clears throat> so for, it's been this year's the centennial, it's been 100 years, and we, uh, my lecture today will be on where we stand nationally and internationally on this, on this very important issue, which is still ongoing 100 years later, because of, mostly because of Turkish denial of, of what took place. So my, <clears throat> my speech is uh, titled, Quest for Justice or Genocide Recognition. Now that the centennial of the Armenian Genocide is coming to a close, Armenians at long last consider the recognition stage of the century-old genocide over and turn their full attention to demanding restitution and justice rather than the mere acknowledgement of this crime against humanity. Let us quickly review developments of this major issue over the past 100 years. In the immediate aftermath of the genocide, most of the survivors were scattered throughout the Middle East and more distant lands. They had no food, no shelter, and barely the clothes on their back. They vainly hoped to be rescued by Christian European nations, enabling them to return to their ancestral homeland in Western Armenia and Cilicia, from which they were so brutally uprooted. Alas, it was not to be. On August 10, 1920, the Treaty of Sèvres was signed by over a dozen countries including the British Empire, France, Italy, Japan, Turkey, and Armenia. The leaders of these countries had committed to restore justice to the long-suffering Armenian nation. The Treaty of Sèvres recognized Armenia's independence and asked President Woodrow Wilson to fix the borders between Armenia and Turkey. Unfortunately, this treaty was never ratified. The European powers reneged on their commitments to their little ally. The newly established Republic of Armenia lasted only two years before being swallowed up by the Soviet Union and Turkey. That's from 1918 to 1920 was the Republic of Armenia. The destitute Armenian refugees, abandoned to their tragic fate, were forced to settle down in permanent exile. In those early years, their first priority was survival, fending off starvation and disease. Gradually, they rebuilt their lives in new homes, churches, and schools. Engaging in lobbying activities and making political demands were the last things on their minds. Every April 24, Armenians commemorate the genocide by gathering in church halls and offering prayers for the souls of the one and a half million innocent victims. Successive generations, particularly after 1965, the 50th anniversary of the Armenian genocide, tried to break the wall of silence surrounding the greatest tragedy that befell the Armenian nation. Tens of thousands of Armenians in communities throughout the world held protest marches, wrote letters to government officials, and petitioned international organizations. The Turkish government, along with the rest of the world, initially turned a deaf ear to Armenian demands for recognition of the long forgotten genocide. But as media outlets, world leaders, parliaments of various countries, and international organizations began acknowledging the Armenian genocide, Turkish leaders, astonished that the crimes perpetrated by their forefathers were making headlines 
after so many decades, pumped massive resources into their campaign of denial, funded foreign scholars to distort the historical facts, engaged the services of powerful lobbying firms, and applied political and economic pressure on countries acknowledging the genocide. Since 1965, over 20 countries, including Canada, France, Italy, the Vatican, Switzerland, Belgium, Greece, Russia, Poland, Sweden, Argentina, Uruguay, etc., have recognized Armenian genocide. Even though it is commonly assumed that the United States has not acknowledged Armenian genocide, in fact, all three branches of the, Arme of the American government, executive, legislative, and judiciary, have repeatedly acknowledged the Armenian genocide. The first time that the executive branch made a reference to the Armenian genocide was all the way back in 1951 in a document filed by the U.S. government with the International Court of Justice, commonly known as the World Court. The second reference to the Armenian Genocide by the executive branch was made by President Ronald Reagan when he issued the Presidential Proclamation No. 4838 on April 22, 1981. The legislative branch of the U.S. government adopted two resolutions confirming the historical facts of the Armenian Genocide. The first resolution, approved by the U.S. House of Representatives on April 8, 1975, design, designated April 24, and I want to quote a sentence from the resolution itself, as a day of remembrance for all the victims of genocide, especially those of Armenian ancestry who succumbed to the genocide perpetrated in 1915, end of quote. A second resolution was adopted by the House of Representatives on September 10, 1984, once again designating April 24, and I'm going to quote, as a day of remembrance for all the victims of genocide, especially the one and a half million people of Armenian ancestry who were the victims of, of the genocide perpetrated in Turkey between 1915 and 1923, end of quote. Most people are unaware that the judiciary, the third branch of the U.S. government, has issued three federal court rulings concerning the Armenian genocide. The first judicial reference to the Armenian genocide was in the unanimous ruling of a three-judge panel of the First Circuit Court of Appeals on August 11, 2010. The second court case was the ruling of federal judge Colleen Collar Cotelli on January 26, 2011 in the lawsuits regarding the Armenian Genocide Museum and Memorial in Washington, D.C. The third judicial reference to the Armenian Genocide was on May 3, 2012 by a three-judge panel of the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals denying the claim of the Turkish Coalition of America against the University of Minnesota. In a unanimous ruling, the judges described the Armenian Genocide as, quote, the Turkish Genocide of Armenians during World War I, end of quote. Thus, all three branches of the U.S. government going on, rec on record reaffirming the genocide, the United States has gained its rightful place in the ranks of righteous nations that have recognized the Armenian Genocide. In fact, in many respects, the United States has compiled a more extensive record of acknowledging the Armenian Genocide than many other countries that have merely adopted a parliamentary resolution on this issue. International organizations have also acknowledged the Armenian Genocide, including the United Nations. The UN Subcommission on Prevention of Discrimination and Protection of Minorities adopted a report in 1985, prepared by Special Rapporteur Benjamin Whitaker, acknowledging that the Armenian Genocide met all the UN criteria for genocide. Two years later, in 1987, the European Parliament also adopted a resolution recognizing the Armenian Genocide. In addition, hundreds of Holocaust and genocide scholars have issued joint statements confirming the facts of the Armenian Genocide. After so many acknowledgments, the Armenian Genocide has become a universally recognized historical fact. Regrettably, Despite such widespread acknowledgement, there are a few remaining major countries that have yet to recognize the Armenian Genocide. The countries that side with the denialist regime of Turkey are not doing so due to lack of evidence or conviction, but sadly because of political expediency with the, with the intent of appeasing the denier. One would hope that these governments would join most of the enlightened world in acknowledging the historical facts as they are and not as the Turkish government wishes them to be. <coughs> Armenians no longer need to convince the world that what took place from 1915 to 1923 was a genocide. However, a simple acknowledgement of what took place and mere apology 
would not heal the wounds and undo the consequences of the genocide. Armenians are still waiting for justice to be served, restoring their historic rights and returning their confiscated lands and properties. In recent years, Armenian-American lawyers have successfully filed lawsuits in U.S. federal courts, securing millions of dollars from New York Life and French AXA insurance company for unpaid claims to policyholders who perished in the genocide. Several more lawsuits are still pending against other insurance companies and German banks to recover funds belonging to victims of the Armenian genocide. In 1915, a centrally planned and executed attempt was made to uproot and decimate an entire nation, depriving the survivors of their cultural heritage as well as their homes, lands, houses of worship, and personal properties. A gross injustice was perpetrated against Armenian people, entitling them, as in the case of the Jewish Holocaust, to just compensation for their enormous losses. Restitution can take many forms. As an initial step, the Republic of Turkey should place under the jurisdiction of the Armenian Patriarchate of Istanbul all the Armenian churches and religious monuments which were expropriated and converted to mosques and warehouses or outright destroyed. In the absence of voluntary restitution by Turkey, Armenia should resort to, resort to litigation seeking restorative justice. In considering legal recourse, one should keep in mind that the Armenian genocide did neither start nor end in 1915. Large-scale genocidal acts were committed, starting with Sultan Abdul Hamid's massacre of 300,000 Armenians from 1894 to 1896, the subsequent killing by the young Turk regime of 30,000 Armenians in Adana in, in 1909, culminating in the genocide of 1.5 million Armenians in 1915 to 1923. In subsequent decades, tens of thousands of Armenians were forcefully Turkified or deported by the Republic of Turkey. Most of the early leaders of the Turkish Republic were high-ranking Ottoman officials who had perpetrated the genocide. This unbroken succession in leadership assured the continuity of the Ottomans' anti-Armenian policies. Today's Republic of Turkey, as the successor of the Ottoman Empire, is therefore responsible for the genocide. An important document recently discovered in U.S. archives provides irrefutable evidence that the government of Turkey continued to uproot and exile the remnants of Armenians well into the 1930s, motivated by purely racist reasons. This document is a strictly confidential cable dated March 2, 1934, and sent by U.S. Ambassador Robert Skinner from Ankara to the U.S. Secretary of State, reporting the deportations of Armenians from the, I'm quoting, the interior of Anatolia to Istanbul, end of quote. In the 1920s and 30s, thousands of Armenian survivors of the genocide were forced out of their homes in Cilicia and Western Armenia and deported to other parts of Turkey or to neighboring countries. In the 1940s, these racist policies were followed by what is called in Turkish, Varlik Vergesi, which is the imposition of an exorbitant wealth tax on Armenians, Greeks, and Jews, bankrupting the remnants of these communities. During the 1955 Istanbul pogroms, many Greeks as well as Armenians and Jews were killed and injured and their properties destroyed. This continuum of massacres, genocide, and deportations highlights the existence of a long strategy implemented by successive Turkish regimes from the 1890s to more recent times to solve the Armenian question with finality. Consequently, the Republic of Turkey is legally liable for its own crimes against Armenians, as well as those committed by its Ottoman predecessors. The Turkish Republic inherited the assets of the Ottoman Empire, and therefore it also inherited its liabilities. It is noteworthy that on several occasions, Turkish leaders have threatened to take legal action against Armenians in international courts on the genocide issue. After some reflection, however, they, they backed down, fearing that they might end up losing such a lawsuit, thus opening the Pandora's box of claims from Armenians. In recent years, Turkish officials, ignoring the verdicts of the 1919 Turkish military tribunals, have claimed that the Armenian genocide could not be considered genocide 
since there had not been a court verdict to that effect. That argument was taken away from them on December 12, 2007, when Switzerland's federal court, or the Supreme Court, confirmed a lower court's conviction of Turkish par party leader Dorhu Perinçek for denying the Armenian genocide. This is the first time that the highest court of any country has passed, has passed such a judgment on the Armenian genocide, setting a precedent for all future legal action on this issue. The Swiss court's verdict is currently being reviewed by the European Court of Human Rights. Finally, since Armenians often refer to their three sequential demands from Turkey, first, recognition of the genocide, second, reparations for their losses, and third, return of their lands, Turkish denialists have concluded that once they recognize the genocide, Armenians will then pursue their two other demands. This is the main reason why Turkish leaders adamantly refuse to acknowledge the Armenian genocide, fearing that its acceptance would lead to demands for restitution. They believe that by denying the first demand, recognition, they would be blocking the next two, reparations and return of the occupied territories. The fact is that commemorative resolutions adopted by legislative bodies of various countries and affirmative statements by world leaders on the Armenian genocide have no force of law and therefore no legal consequence. Armenians, Turks, and others involved in this still unresolved issue must realize that recognition of the Armenian genocide or the lack thereof will neither enable nor deter its consideration by international legal institutions. Once Turkish officials realize that recognition by itself cannot and would not automatically lead to other demands, they may no longer persist in their obsessive denial. Without waiting for any further recognition, 100 years of waiting is long enough. Armenians must pursue their historic rights through legal channels, such as the International Court of Justice, where only states have jurisdiction, the European Court of Human Rights, as well as individual country courts. A good example of such legal action is the lawsuit filed earlier this year by the Armenian Church, the Catholico State of Cilicia, which, re which relocated to Lebanon after the genocide. The Armenian Church is now seeking the return of its former headquarters in Cis, Turkey. The Church is petitioning the Constitutional Court of Turkey, and which most probably will be turned down, and failing that, the Catholico State would then appeal to the European Court of Human Rights. Justice must be pursued by, all, by legal as well as political and economic means. After all, who could be opposed to Armenian demands for justice? Not even Turkish President Erdogan, whose ruling political party ironically is called Justice and Development Party. For Armenians, seeking justice means the recovery of all losses from the genocide, including communal properties such as churches, monuments, cemeteries, schools, confiscated properties, and the occupied territories of Western Armenia. Therefore, 100 years after the genocide, recognition is not the end game. But the long overdue demand for justice, which means the recovery of everything that can be returned and compensation for whatever that cannot be returned. Thank you.